Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, and we'll start in verse number 44. Acts chapter 10, and verse 44. We'll read down to the end of the chapter there, and uh, we may get over into chapter 11. It depends on, I guess, uh, how many rabbits are chased. And uh, speaking of rabbits, I uh, listened to a video. Couldn't, of course, couldn't watch it going down the road, but uh, uh, a fella was frying him up some rabbit and uh, stewing him up some rabbit. So he was, he was talking about all how to do all that. So there's recipes available if you are interested in that. Uh, Acts 10, verse 44. So we've got to the, uh, Cornelius had prayed, the angel, Messenger of God came to him and told him uh, who he needed to send for. He sent for Peter. And uh, in the process of that, Peter, uh, God got to working on Peter's heart. Because I think uh, without that, I believe without that God working on him, he may not, he probably would not have went uh, to see uh, Cornelius and his house. And so uh, we're here last week. We talked about uh, what he told them of about Jesus. And uh, tonight, we're going to see the effects of what he told them. So verse 44 through 48, it says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So, uh, uh, no, uh, verse, back up to verse 44. Uh, some folks uh, call this the Gentile Pentecost because here the Holy Spirit fell upon the Gentiles. Acts chapter 2, some people label that as the uh, Jewish Pentecost. Uh, uh, I just say Pentecost. I don't like give it no no label, but here indeed uh, the Cornelius and those that were gathered there with him, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. Now, uh, let me paint you this picture. Peter didn't have enough time to call on James and Melanie to come do an invitation song. The pastor. Peter didn't have the opportunity to present these as candidates uh, before the church, before the Holy Ghost didn't fell upon them. They didn't have to vote. They didn't have to give no okay. They didn't, God gave the okay. So God's told Cornelius what he needed to do. So he prepared Cornelius' heart. He prepared Peter's heart to come. Peter came, shared Jesus. And the Holy Ghost fell. Now, ain't that something? Uh, now, I've heard folks uh, come into church and say uh, they want to join the church, come up front during the, during the invitation time, and uh, they pull out this little card and say, well, uh, you need to go get a haircut, need to take a bath, need to shave. Gave them a whole list of things to do. And uh, when you get all that taken care of, you can come back and talk to us about being part of our church. They didn't have time to do that. God done gave them the stamp of approval when the Holy Ghost fell upon them. Now, they are saved when, uh, in verse 44. When the Holy Ghost fell, I believe they were saved. Now, uh, you come to me, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lead you in the prayer. I I don't believe I think God just 
came down and joined up with them because their heart was craving God. Now, uh, before we get too far carried away there, I want you to turn back with me. My, I had to turn the page to get to where I want to go. Uh, verse 2 of chapter 10, where it talks about Cornelius. Because if he'd have been in the Baptist church, he'd have probably been chairman of the deacons. Teaching the Sunday school class, maybe leading the singing, uh, and whatever else he wanted to do. Why? Because he was a devout man. God looks on their hearts. And there was one big thing that Cornelius was missing, and that was a relationship with God. As you see there, uh, he feared God with all his house, and he gave much alms to the people, wasn't stingy. He helped those that needed helping. And look at there, he prayed to God always. God came to him in vision and said, your prayer has been heard. You need to send for Peter. Now, how many folks do we just brush off that needs to hear our testimony? How many folks do we, how many folks do I brush off? that just needs a kind word, a listening ear. And again, I tell you, my prayer is, God, you prepare me like you prepared Peter to be about your business. So uh, while Peter yet spake, in verse 44, he didn't call for James and Melanie to do the invitation song. While he was still speaking about Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost fell on him. Now, if you remember when Peter agreed to go with those guys that Cornelius came, he took some people with him. J. Vernon McGee says he probably took those with him to be witnesses of what is fixing to take place. Because this was this is new. This is new. The gospel going to the Gentiles. This is new. So he brought some people with him. Verse 45, those people that came with him. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. They were astonished. Now, something I want to point out to you is that Schofield has this dated as A.D. 41. So just a few years after Christ was crucified, just a few years after he was buried, just a few years after he rose from the grave, just a few years from where when he ascended, the gospel is reaching the Gentiles. Uh, I quote this verse a lot, but if you'll turn over there with me to uh, John 1 and verse number 11. John 1 and verse number 11. It says, he came into his own. He came unto the Jewish nation, his people, and his own, his own people received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, 
nor of the will of man, but of God. Verse 44 tells us that they done been born again in Acts chapter 10. And those in verse 45, those that had came with Peter, the Jewish people that came with Peter, who were born again, were astonished. But I want to remind you, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So they, in verse 45 of Acts 10, they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, one of the things on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 that happened was that the uh, Holy Spirit of God uh, filled all of them and they began to speak in other tongues. Now, I do not believe that that was a bunch of gibberish they were say, saying. I believe it was actual languages they had never studied before, never had been able to speak before. All of a sudden now, then, they were able to speak them because there were folks there gathered with them that could understand everything they said but couldn't prior to that. They heard each man voice in their own language. Now, you may, I, I know we stand, I'm standing tonight in a Baptist church. I, I, I've shared this story before. Uh, I think this church was in San Francisco, which uh, had a lot of Chinese immigrants around this church, and uh, they was having revival services, and this young lady uh, came in, couldn't speak a lick of English. And, uh, and it happened not long ago. Now, you can say, well, you, whoever told you this, I don't believe them. Well, you, you take it however you want to take it. But here it is. Young lady came. Couldn't speak a lick of English, but the soldier put his arm around her and began speaking to her in her native language. And she accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. And uh, as it says there in verse 44, the Holy Ghost then fell upon her. And I was just rejoicing the fact that God just so happened to plant this soldier who apparently had been around some Chinese sometime in his life and was able to communicate with this young lady. And they were just rejoicing. And they got to talking to that soldier, and he said, uh, I didn't know a lick of Chinese before I saw that girl. Now, you can take that however you want to. So I believe that God works out whatever needs working out when salvation needs to take place. He brought Peter to these folks. If he didn't come uh, to these folks, would we be here tonight? Would it still just be a Jewish Christianity? Well, Again, I'm thankful God worked on Peter's heart. And uh, I got a feeling that these folks here was wanting to know, is this real? Well, in Acts chapter 2, they begin speaking in tongues, showing that something had took place. And the same thing happens here on this day when the Holy Ghost fell. Now, does it fall? Uh, I believe... For the most part, the tongues are a sign gift and that the apostles had that to show to others that they were of God. But you and I today, we have God's word. We have God's word. And I, I believe for the most part, the tongues have went away.
Does it show up in cir cir circum certain circumstances? Well, according to that testimony I hear from out in California, it does. Verse 46. They were astonished that the Gentiles, the Holy Ghost had been poured out upon the Gentiles, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Now, had they, have they voted yet? No, they hadn't voted. But Peter does ask a question. I guess maybe here's the vote. Can any man Forbid water that they should not be baptized. In other words, you might know any reason why we can't baptize these people. Because they done say. Does anybody know? And uh, as we talked about before we went live tonight, I don't know that uh, if he used uh, what verbiage he used. But I don't think it mattered what verbiage he used. Now, I know scripture says, go ye therefore, baptize all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I don't know if Peter said I, I don't know if he said we. But he asked the question, can any man forbid water that they should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? I don't think nobody spoke up and said, no, no, no. I believe, as verse 48 says, they were baptized. Now, you say, was well, this the, the first time that uh, Gentiles had heard? Well, uh, I want to offer this up to you. If you look back over to Acts chapter 8. Philip, one of the first deacons of the church, was uh, out doing the work of the ministry. If you remember, uh, the apostles were given gifts to exercise. Apparently, the deacons were given the same gifts. Uh, Stephen had that same these same gifts, and Philip sees this Ethiopian eunuch. Now, was he a Jew? I don't know. I know he's been up to Jerusalem to worship. And I know this, that as uh, God told Philip to go join up with him, he's reading the scripture. And Philip starts with uh, Isaiah and tells him about Jesus and that this man saved. And if you look down with me to verse number 36 of Acts chapter 8, kind of the same question that Peter asked. And as they went on their way, they came into the, a certain water. Now, the Peter asked the question in Acts 10. Here, the eunuch asked the question. They came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Now, if you've got a different translation of the Bible other than King James, you may not have verse 37, but down in the footnotes. But this is what the King James Version from the uh, original transcript that they had. They translated verse 37 to say this. Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. They went down both into the water both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now, if you'll turn back over to Acts chapter 10, again in verse 47, Peter asked the question, does anybody, can any man forbid water that they should not be baptized who which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And uh, I believe there was silence. 
And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. J. Vernon McGee says uh, this incident, as we said earlier, had been called the Gentile Pentecost. Peter was astonished that the Gentiles should receive the Holy Spirit. This outpouring of the Holy Spirit was made audible by their speaking in tongues. The tongues were an evidence to Peter and uh, others that were with him that God would save the Gentiles and would give them the Holy, his Holy Spirit. And as we go on into Acts chapter 11, we're going to see Peter recounting of this story as we've dug into it in Acts chapter 10. Uh, and then he finishes up with this paragraph. Again, let me call your attention to the fact that the book of Acts records three representative converse, conversions. The Ethiopian eunuch that we just read about was a son of Ham. Saul of Tarsus was a son of Shem. Well, there's only one left, isn't it? Cornelius was the son of Japheth. In each instance, the Holy Spirit moved using the man of God and using the word of God. May, again, may you and I have that same desire. God, you move me. Lord, you move us to do your work. The commission to the church is to go to all. Go to all. Not just the ones that we like, the ones that like us, the ones that talk like us, the ones who look like us. Go to all. Any word, word from anybody before we close out tonight? All right, well, let's have a word of prayer and we'll close out. Uh, thank you all for being here. Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, tonight for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered tonight as we are. And, Lord, uh, you have your own way in each one of our lives. Take us and use us. Help us to spread your word, your gospel, wherever we go. And if there's any that's lost, I'll ask you to save them tonight before it's everlasting too late. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.